Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dilmer again, and today I'm really excited because I'm gonna continue with part two of my machine learning examples with parking a car. In this demo, I'm going to be actually looking at the implementation. So we looked at the project as a whole in the previous video, how the car was set up, how the area was set up. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the code. So we're gonna be looking at the car controller. We're also going to be looking at the car agent and a couple more classes that I created to be able to reward or take points away from the agent. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so the first thing that I'm gonna show you is the video of the scene playing. So this is gonna be the first scene that I created. It's called Parking Lot Example. I showed you that on the previous video, but I wanted to reiterate and show it to you again. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and also show you that this project is now available in GitHub. So if you guys wanna download it, go to github.com, Delmar V, Unity, ML Essentials, and basically everything that I have right now has been checked in. I also have the examples from the previous videos, which is the crossing road, and also some other prototypes that I created as part of the YouTube series on machine learning. So the first thing that I'm gonna look at is some of the decisions that I made when I was implementing this. So the car, for example, has a controller, right? You have to move the car forward. The car also can turn left. It can also turn right, and it can also stay idle. So the first thing that I did is I, and I mentioned that on the previous video, is I created what's called a car controller. So let's go ahead and look at that. So the car controller, like I said, is responsible for moving the car. So I needed to specify a few parameters because the more parameters that I specify, the more flexibility that I have with training. So one that I specified was the speed. So this controls how fast the car can go. Also the torque. This is you know, how much force I apply to the rotation. Also, I am changing the animation. So this is going to allow me to say, okay, at what point do I change you know, the torque to the torque animation? So just specifying that value. The same thing with the idle. At what point do I change the animation to an idle animation when the car is slowing down? So these values allow me to do that. And then of course I have an instance, a reference to the car animator so that I can apply different animations. I also have an enum that I created to determine the basically at what point the car is idle, at what point the car is moving forward, moving backward, turn left, and then turn right. So this is just a, duration, a direction variable that has a reference to that. And then I also set up another variable called is autonomous. The reason I did this is because when I started working on the control, I was using the controller by using the input keys on the keyboard. So what I decided to do is, okay, I'm gonna start working on that, but I'm going to just control it with the keyboard. And then what I'm gonna do is, right after I implement the keyword, the keyword features, and I know that the car is moving the way that I want it, I'm going to be adding a new property called autonomous, which is going to basically allow the agent to communicate with the car controller and move on it, which is gonna move on, it, on its own. So that's what the is autonomous is. And then rigid body is so that I can move the car with physics. And then on the awake method, I just get a reference to that rigid body. Then on the update method, this is what actually changes the current direction to idle. So all I'm saying, if, if the magnitude is less than or equal to my variable, which I set in here, which is 0.2, or whatever I set on the inspector, then I change the current direction to be idle, and then I also apply the animator state. So this method right here, it's a method that I implemented to change two things. So one of them is going to be, let's go ahead and look at it. One of them is going to be the actual property on the animator, because I wanna know, okay, if the, car, if the car is idle, I wanna make sure that that animation is playing. If the car is not idle, then I'm gonna go into move forward, move backward, turn left or turn right. So what I do here is I pass in the enum and I say, okay, if we're idle, I'm gonna make sure that I set all these different variables, these properties on the animator to false, just to make sure that the, the current state of the animation is not set to move backward, move forward, turn left or turn right. So whatever I pass in here, which is gonna be the direction, if this one is idle, everything else is going to be you know, set to false. If this one is moving forward, then everything else is gonna be to false. That way I can animate the car the way, you know, the way that it should based on the actual state of the car at that point. The other thing that this also allows me to do is you can pass in an animation name and also pass in you know, whether that property is gonna be true or false. So that's what I'm basically doing in here. And then of course, this is gonna be the current direction. It's gonna be the one that gets passed into here. So if I'm currently idle, this is gonna set it to idle and then everything else is gonna be set to false. So let's go ahead and go back up. So 
On the update method, this is the one that is responsible for setting you know, the animation to idle based on the property that I have. The other thing that I also implemented was the apply movement. Because I'm using physics, I'm, I did it on the fix update. And if we look at the apply movement method, this is it's pretty straightforward. I am saying, okay, if I'm, you know, if I'm pressing the up arrow key on the keyboard, I'm gonna be changing the animator state to, be, to move forward. I'm also going to be applying a force. And this one is something that I play with. I also change this to use acceleration. I try it with force, impulse, velocity change. I think the one that worked best was velocity change. And I also noticed that Unity was doing that same thing with their ML agent example. So I decided to use velocity change as the, you know, as how the physics get applied to the rigid body. And then I'm just using, you know, if I'm going, if I'm moving up, I'm going to be using this transform forward and then I multiply the speed. And then the same thing with backwards. I'm just saying, okay, I'm gonna be using that same property. Then I'm gonna multiply by the speed. But in this case, I'm gonna do a negative number because we're gonna go in the opposite direction. If we're moving left, then I'm using the add torque. And I'm just saying, okay, because I know that this is only going to be moving on the z-axis, and you guys can see that this is using transform that up. I'm just saying, okay, grab the transform that up, multiply it by negative torque, and that way we can go, you know, we can turn the car left. And then if I'm using the right arrow, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but I'm gonna be moving the car on the right direction. This other property here is also one that allows me to know, okay, if I can also apply a torque, the reason why I implemented this method is because I wanted to make sure that the, the velocity on the x-axis was you know, within, within a threshold. So what I'm doing in here is I'm grabbing the velocity of the rigid body, and then I did an absolute value of velocity x, and then I'm saying, okay, as long as the minimum speed before torque is greater than that value, then I'm gonna allow to apply the torque. And the same thing if I'm using, you know, if I'm doing a z, then I can apply, you know, I can apply the torque. So this is, you know, very simple car controller. It allows you to move forward, to move backwards, to stay idle, turn left and turn right. So let's go ahead and look at the car aging now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it here and we can put the car controller here so that I can reference to it anytime we have questions. So this is gonna be the implementation of the agent. Most of the code is going to be here. And the first thing that I do is I inherit from base, base agent. I decided to create a class and do some refactoring and move you know, most of the common behavior that I was gonna have on every agent to this class. So this class is basically has a reference to the ground. The reason why I did this is because for every single area that I'm gonna be creating for this series, I'm gonna have a success material, I'm gonna have a failure material, and I'm gonna have a default material. So I didn't wanna have to repeat code on the agent, on every single agent that I did. That way we can just have something common to use on every agent. In that way, we can change, you know, the back, the, the ground color every time we, you know, we have a success. So in this case, it's going to be this ground. So this changes to green, red, or it's going to get to the default color if the aging is not in any of those two states. So let's go ahead and go back. And then this just has this method that swaps the ground material. And then, of course, it's going to be inheriting from, from agent. And this is going to be, you know, the ML agent's implementation. So let's go ahead and go back to the car agent. So a couple of things in here, I have a vector tree because I need to store the original position of the car. I also have the behavior parameters and I'm gonna show you why I have this. And this is cool because you can, you know, you can access all these, all the different properties that are on the behavior parameter. So just to re, just to reiterate what this is, this is gonna be this component here that is on the car agent. I just needed to get a reference to this. The reason why I needed to get a reference to it is because I needed to get the behavior type and I'm gonna show you how I use that. So let's go ahead and go back. So that's the reference to behavior parameters. I also have a reference to the car controller because you know we need to send information to the car controller so that the car can actually move. And then of course I need a reference to the rigid body and, and I'll show you why I do that. And also I have a, re a reference to car spots. The, and I'm gonna show you that, car, that class, but that class is responsible for setting you know, what cars are going to be visible and what cars are gonna be hidden and where to actually put the goal. And I think I need to make some improvements to that class and I'm gonna show you why that is. So the first things that I use is initialize. I wasn't using this method on the previous video, but what this method does, this is gonna be the first thing that executes whenever you wanna set up an instance of, of agent. So this is gonna be kind of like the start method for 
the, you know, for a mono behavior, but in this case, it's gonna be for the agent. This is just gonna be executed once when the, when the agent initializes. So instead of using the awake, I decided to use this because Unity provides it, and I think that's the right way to do it. So I get a reference to behavior parameters in addition to the original position. I also get the controller reference, Rigi, the car controller rigid body reference, and also the car the car spots reference. So I go to transform that parent and get components in children. And the way that that works is gonna go to this one, and then it's gonna say, okay, which one of these objects have this type of a class? And I know that the car, if I look at the car spots here, this one is gonna have it, so it's gonna get that reference. So the other thing that I implemented as well is, is this method called reset parking lot area. The, the reason why I needed to reset it is because when I finish, so if the car starts here, and let's say that we move the car throughout here, and we crash or we achieve a goal, then in that case, I need to reset everything, right? I need to set, I need to reset the position of the car, so I need to reset the position of this car, the rotation, everything needs to be reset. So I implemented this method to do that. It just basically says, okay, you know what? I'm going to, the first thing that I'm gonna set is I'm gonna set the car controller is autonomous. And this is another thing that I wanted to show you. So the way that I set this method, remember here where I am using the keyboard to control the car if I wanted to control it that way. But I also have a property called is autonomous. If I don't set this property, the car is not gonna move. It's gonna require that we actually move, you know, like the keys on my keyboard. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna, I'm controlling this property based on the behavior type. So if we were to change this to say something like heuristic and, and I actually need to change this because if it's default, it's going to be autonomous. If it's set to anything else, so if it's set to, for instance, if it's set to heuristic only, then it's gonna, this is gonna be set to false, which is actually true. At that point, we want to control the car with this. It's also gonna be controlled with the heuristic method here. So this is something that I still playing around. I, might, I will do a PR to, to look at it and then perhaps implement it better. But right now, you know, if the behavior type is default, this is gonna be autonomous, the car is gonna move on its own. Another thing that I reset is gonna be the, the position and rotation of the car. So I use the original position of the car and also identity of the rotation. Another thing that I was thinking about on doing here was to change the local position of the car randomly. So I was gonna allow the car to be placed in basically in a grid at random positions, but I, I will do that in the future for now. Just know that if the car starts right here, it's going to be reset to that position. If I set it right here, if I move it, let's say that I put it right here, it's gonna be using that position as the original position. The same thing if I do, you know, something like that. Actually, the rotation is going to be always zero, so it's always gonna be reset regardless. If you have the car like that, it's still gonna be reset to that because I'm not storing the, the rotation, I'm just setting it to zero. Let's go ahead and undo that. And then the other thing that I do is because we're using physics, so you wanna make sure like if this is moving and it has velocity and you reset it, we don't want to have the previous velocity be accounting for the new velocity, so that's why I'm resetting the velocity to zero and also the angular velocity to zero. Another thing that I do is I call, I call this car spot setup. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Just know that this is going to be resetting the position of the cars and it's gonna be randomly placing which cars are shown and which cars are hidden, and also, you know, resetting their orientation and everything. So the other thing that I also do here is on the update method, and the reason why I do this is if, if the car, for whatever reason, falls, and this was when I didn't have this, like I didn't have these barriers before, so the car was falling, so what I was doing is I, okay, you know what, if the car position of Y is less than or equal to zero, I'm going to be taking away points, which means that it's going to penalize the agent and also it's going to reset the agent because it's gonna call on episode N. So right now, the only the only time that that's gonna happen is if we crash really hard and that car happens to fly. And if you set the speed to a very high number, that's gonna happen. So right, I still have it just in case if that happens. The other method is really important. It's going to be collect observations. And I show you that on the previous videos. In this one, I decided to do a little couple of more observations. I'm doing the local position of the car the rotation of the car, also the car goals. The So let's say that the car goal here, it's set up right here, which means, let me go ahead and, and zoom in. Let's say that we have to, this car wasn't here, right? And we need to, we need to get to this area right here because the car goal was here. 
then in that case, it's going to be capturing that position. It's going to collect that observation. And if the cargo, for whatever reason, is rotated, I'm going to also be accounting for that observation. This is what's going to be passing to the TensorFlow, and it's going to start learning. Basically, it's going to be gathering a lot of data for you. And then I'm also capturing an observation for velocity. So when you look at these, you say, OK, Dilmer, you're, you're collecting a lot of observations. But we're actually collecting a lot more than that, because like I said on the previous video, we had, if we go back in here, we have a lot of different rays that we are using to find out everything around the car at any point. So if you look at the car engine, and we look down here, we also have ray, percep ray perception sensors. We have one that is sitting on top, one that is sitting at the pivot. So each one of these is capturing, you know, whatever is seen through. And and I would I shouldn't say whatever is actually capturing what the, you know, every single one of these tags. So if the car sees another car, if the car sees a goal, if it sees a barrier, if it sees a tree, it's gonna be, you know, looking at that data and collecting that that observation. In previous versions of ML agents, you had to specifically tell the system how many you know, how many observations you're capturing on those rays. In the new version, you don't have to do that. The Unity actually does that automatically, which is nice because I don't have to keep track of, you know, how many observations I'm tracking on the sensor because, it, you know, it's going to be just way too many hundreds of them. It could get to hundreds of them pretty easily. I think I have about 140 through 160 observations right now. So anyway, so that's what collects observation is. And on action receive is the other method that I am also using. So this is what's going to be received when the when the agent starts learning. And you're actually going to get this information right away. As soon as the car starts learning, it's going to start collecting data. And it's going to try to do its best to set up the direction. So what I do is I get an action from this vector action, which is a float of arrays. And I have a switch statement that says, OK, if the value is 0, I'm going to change the car controller current direction, which is going to be this enum right here. And I set it to idle. If it's 1, I know that the car is moving forward. If it's 2, it's going to be moving backwards. And you know, at the beginning, this is going to be, it's all going to be crazy numbers. It's not going to know exactly what it is. But as you start rewarding the agent, the agent is going to start to learn and find patterns, which means that the direction is going to be accurate in respect to the goals. So, and when I say that is, okay, at the beginning, the car is just going to go crazy and start testing, it's testing, it's testing. And then as you start rewarding the car, he's going to start learning, okay, you know what? I need to move forward. I need to turn. I need to get, you know, to my goal. And, and it's crazy. It's just like magic. It, it works really well after, you know, after a few minutes of training. And another thing that I also noticed that Unity was doing is they were penalizing the agent after every action received. So, what I decided to do is um, I'm capturing the max steps. So if we look at the max steps here, the, this is actually coming from the agent. So if we go into the agent itself, if I do F12 and F12, and if we look at the max step, which is, I think it's in this class. Oh, yeah, it's right here. So this is going to be that same value that you see right here. So the way that it's going to work, it's going to say, OK, I, I have that set to 5,000 or whatever number you have it set to. And it's going to be saying, OK, I'm going to penalize the agent by grabbing negative number, which is going to be a negative 1 divided by max step. So that's going to be a 0, 0.00 number. And so it's going to be penalizing the agent every time you know, we call on action, the agent calls on action receive. And I found that that was actually helping the learning. It's, it's actually forcing the agent to learn and, and get to a goal quicker. And I noticed that Unity was doing that too, so I decided to do that. It actually helped. So this is something that helped the training. The other methods that I show you in previous videos is give points and also take away points. In this case, I, I adjusted a little bit. I'm taking the amount because in the future, I'm going to have different, basically different uh, obstacles. Or in this case, I have a tree if I want the car to collide with a tree. And let's say that at that point, uh, we want to, for whatever reason, we want to crash with the tree and we want to give it a point because maybe the goal is to crash the tree or or maybe we want to pass a stoplight and we put an invisible collider in the, you know, after the stoplight. In that case, I want to be able to have this method available for me and be able to change the amount that we give on the reward. So the first argument is going to be the amount. This is going to be how much we want to reward the agent. This is just a property that I set up to determine if this is the final goal, because I might have goals that, you know, they're just milestones. I might have goals that are just final goals. So 
this is a property that determines that. And I just call the swap ground material here, which in this case is gonna be a success. And then I also end the episode. The other method that I also implemented was take away points. Same thing that I do above, in this case is gonna be a failure because we're taking points away. And I'm also just, you know, taking points away from the reward. I might do something like this where I'm saying, you know what, I'm gonna be taking, you know, some points away. So I might just say, you know, what is the amount that you're gonna be taking out? And, and for now, I think, you know, for now, I think, and I can actually just do it right now. We can hard code it to that value. That way it's consistent with the one that, you know, that I have above. And if you haven't looked, if you haven't done default values, make sure that you looked at those. But what this is saying is, you know, if I don't pass in any parameters, this is gonna be the default value that, I pass, that, that I'm gonna be sending the amount to. So in the other references that I'm calling this, I'm not passing parameters. So this means that I'm gonna be passing in, you know, zero, negative 0.01F to the R reward method, and I'm also ending the episode. So the other method I'm, that I also implemented was heuristic. I, I explained this method in the past, but basically what this does is allows me to set the behavior type on the agent. So if I wanna train the agent manually myself without actually getting data from, from TensorFlow, then what I can do is I can just change this to heuristic and, and then I can control the agent with my keyboard and then basically what's gonna happen is the actions were gonna, are gonna be set to the value that you put in and then on action receive is gonna be getting those actions. So this is helpful when you're starting out working with your, with your agents. And it's basically the same implementation that I had in here, similar implementation, except that I'm passing in these different actions. And I'm also using the can apply torque here because I wanted to make sure that it was consistent with the car controller. So I know that I cover a lot of it here, and but you know, like I said, if you if I cover something that doesn't make sense, just look at the code in GitHub because you guys are gonna be able to download it. The other thing that I was I wanted to show you as well is the car spot. So if we look in here and we looked at we looked at a couple couple of met, couple objects in here before, but if I look at the car spots. So one thing that I wanted to do, and I still need to make some changes on this one, is I wanted to decide how many cars to have at one point, which means that if I want to have two spots available, I could actually set this to a two. And it's not always gonna be set to a two, meaning that it's not gonna set, it's not gonna provide two different parking spots available to us at any time. What's gonna do is gonna generate a, a random number between one and two. So it's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the car one parking spot right now, but I might give a car, you know, two parking spots later. So this value allows me to change that. And the reason I did that is because I wanna make sure that I make, you know, I keep this really flexible for future for future videos. In fact, if I go to scenes and I look at the parking lot advance, you guys are gonna see that if I were to run this, I'm gonna have you know different parking spots available at all times. So I'm gonna hit play, I'm gonna show you how that works. And I think I'm losing my voice because I'm talking really fast. But see how this one has two, this one has one, this one has two now, this one has three. The reason why that is happening is because of that property. So if I go in here and look at car spots, I have it set to a three. So it could be either be set to a one, it could be either set to a two, or it could also be set to a three. So let's go back to our parking spots. And let's look at the parking spots. So this one takes a prefab, which is gonna be the car goal. And that car goal is a very simple, is a very simple prefab that allows me to determine, you know, basically it's gonna be an invisible collider that the car is gonna be colliding with and to determine if, if, that, if, if the car got to the parking spot. So if I go ahead and put it here and we go in and I expand it, actually expand the collider, this is gonna be what gets put into those areas whenever we randomize a parking spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. So that's what this, this one is. Let's go ahead and look at the implementation. So a couple of things that I wanted to do here, and I actually close this right now. If I have a public class here called the called cash car, and, and I'll show you why that is, but this one has a position and also a rotation. Just know that it's gonna be what, what's called a, a POCO, a plain, you know, a plain object. And like I said, the car spots is gonna be inherited from mono behavior. It also has a car goal prefab. This is gonna be the one that we use to put in place where we're gonna be making a, par a parking spot available. Also the property to determine how many cars to hide. And this is gonna be the car obstacles, which is going to be all the different cars that I'm parking. So 
I haven't actually shown you that class, but that class is going to be fairly, fairly simple. Let me just go ahead and put it on the right hand side. And I also have a dictionary of all the different cards that I'm, that I'm caching. And the reason for this is because I need to know, you know, what cars I'm going to be generating randomly and also which ones I'm going to be hiding. So I just created a dictionary for that. It has an int and also a cache car, which is going to be that object. I also have a car goal here, which is going to help me determine, you know, where, where I need to get to, uh, you know, from the agent to the goal. That's what the agent is using to, you know, collect, collect an observation is going to be this right here. So if we go back in here on the awake method, I just basically get all the different cars that I, that are currently parked. And I set it, I set it to true because if they're hidden for some reason, I want to make sure that I get them all. And I'm also using linking here to say, okay, you know what? I want to get all the, all the cars that are parked that have this type of enum. And this is going to be this class right here it has an enum where, that decides what obstacles they are. One of them is going to be a barrier. One of them could be a tree, it could be a car, and it could be a ground. So I'm just going through, you know, for each, and then I'm just setting that information based on the get instance ID of each one of those obstacles. And I know this is a lot, guys. Like I said, just, just take a look at the, the GitHub repo. But I'm going to just show it to you. If it doesn't make sense, take a look at it. Feel free to ask any questions. So after I call the awake method and I set my dictionary, I also have another method which is called get, get random nums to hide cars. So this is what allows me to, you know, to hide two cars and then have two parking spots available or hide three cars. It just really depends on how many cars I want to hide. So I'm passing in how many cars I want to hide. I'm just setting up a list of ints and looping through each one of those, you know, from zero to how many. So if I have two, this value is going to be set to two. And then I just saying, okay, you know what? While the count of cars to hide is less than how many, then I'm going to start generating a random number from zero to whatever that number is. As long as I haven't added that to the dictionary, then I'm going to be adding basically the cars that I need to hide to this list. And in that way, what's going to happen is this is going to say, okay, you know what? These are how many cars I'm going to be hiding. And then based on that number, it's going to be hiding the cars. So I still need to make some improvements and I'm going to show you why that is. So once the setup gets called, it's going to say, okay, which cars I need to hide is going to be, they're going to be put into here. And it's basically just going to be an index of, okay, this could be the car at index zero. It could be a car at index one, or it could be a car, you know, at index four. It, it could vary depending on the number that I pass in here. And if I go here, then I have another for each statement. This is what it's basically doing the randomization. Then I look through each one of the cars. I get an instance of the car that I, you know, that I actually added to my cache list of cars. I also get the velocity. I set it to zero. So I set this to zero because if somebody crashes with one of the cars, I want to make sure that the velocity of the car that crashed with this, actually the car that is sitting in idle, is set to zero. I also change the position. So if for whatever reason this car right here, let's say that I go and this car was rotated, I want to make sure that it's reset, right? Or if the car is moving and it has some speed, a velocity, then I want to make sure that we reset it. So that's what I'm doing in here. And then the other thing that I'm doing in here, if I have, if the cars that I want to hide, it's equal to the counter. So this is what basically is hiding cars randomly. If the cars to hide contains the counter that I currently have, then I'm going to be hiding that car. And if the, call, if the car does not have a goal, so what this is, is going to be the car goal. That's, so what I'm checking here is I'm saying, okay, if the car goal is not set to null, then I'm going to be destroying it. The, the way that this is implemented, it only allows you to have one goal at a time. And I need to change that because it wouldn't be fair if you're, if I'm hiding some of these cars and there's no goals in there. So right now I have a bug. I need to change this. This car goal seems to be an array. The issue that I have right now is I, I can't really find a way to dynamically, dynamically set these observations to be dynamic, meaning that I can only have one observation. I can only set this in the beginning and then, so if I have, let's say, Let's say that I have about 20, uh, five different parking spots that I'm going to be getting to. So at the beginning, I can set it to one, but I, I haven't found a way to dynamically set to, to one goal or multiple goals. So I'm still looking into how to implement this. Right now, this just only allows you to do, to do one car goal at a time, which like I said, is not fair, but that's the way that it works right now. And so this is going to get the car goal. It's going to destroy it at the beginning. 
and then it's going to instantiate it based on the car that, ha that needs to be hidden. And then any cars that don't need to be hidden are going to be set to true. So this is what, and then I'm just incrementing the counter. So like I said, like if you, if I were to play this, I'm going to show you how that part works. And let's give it a second here until it loads. And let me just show you why, why this is, this works with one car hidden. You can see how the car goal is getting set in the right position. But if we were to set this to a, a larger number, let's say that I set these two car spots to a number two. Now we're going to be getting two values, but it's not going to be fair, right? Because if I look at this and actually the parking lot area, you can see that the, there's a goal here, but this doesn't have a goal. And that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. This needs to be changed that instead of having one car goal, it's going to be two goals based on the, the amount of cars that I'm going to be hiding. So right now this is really not working really well because you know, there's some parking spots that are available, but the car goal is not getting put into those places. That's why the car is always going to this area and not to this one because the, there's not a car goal in here. So I'm going to be changing how that works. So let's go ahead and look at a couple more classes and I think I'm going to call it good. The car obstacle allows me to determine, you know, what the obstacle time is going to be. The obstacle type is going to be, this could be a barrier. This could be a tree, a car or a ground. I have an enum of that type. I also have a property of that type. This is so that I can get a reference to a car agent. I get the agent on the awake method so that I can cache it. And then I'm just saying, okay, if, if I have a collision on trigger enter with the player, I'm going to be taking away points. I'm going to be taking points away from the agent and then if for whatever reason I want to not use a trigger collision, I want to use a normal collision, then I can also use either type of collisions if I want to use one or the other. And then I think I show you car spots already. I also, I haven't shown you the car goal, but this is pretty straightforward. I have a car agent reference, the goal type, how much the reward is going to be. If I want to enforce a goal mean rotation, this is so that I can, you know, enforce if the car needs to be rotated properly. Let's say the car gets to here and it's rotated this way. I want to make sure the car, you know, we teach the car to rotate itself. This is just so that I can, you know, start improving how the car is parking. This is going to be the minimum rotation. And then this is so that I can track, okay, if the car has been, has already used this goal so that I don't do, I don't do it multiple times. Because we're using collisions, it's always good to do this. And then what the goal type is going to be, if this is going to be a milestone or if it's going to be a final destination. This is so that I can put, let's say that I want the car to always get to this area and also this area. I can get a milestone in here and then this will be the final destination pretty much. And then on collision enter, it just says, okay, if I'm colliding with the player and I haven't used this car goal, then I'm going to get a reference to the agent. And I think I was using, oh yeah, I haven't, I didn't do this on the awake. I just did it right here on collision enter. And then if this is a milestone, I'm going to set this value to a true. And I'm going to say, I'm going to give, give points to the, to the agent. And this is going to be the goal reward. It's going to be this value right here. And then if this is not a milestone, this is going to be the final destination. This if statement is going to check, okay, if I'm requiring that the car, the agent has a specific rotation, then I can enforce this. If I'm not requiring that, I'm just going to give, I'm just going to take away points from the agent. But if I'm not enforcing a minimum rotation, I'm just going to give points to the agent. So I know that's a lot to take guys and I probably went too fast in some of these areas, but just know, like I said, that this is going to be, this is available on GitHub. And also take a look at this other scene, which is the parking lot advanced that has a more extended parking lot. I also have cars here, I have cars here and also cars here. And the next thing that I want to do for the previous video is I'm going to go into the car agent and I'm going to be improving, like I said, the car goals. There's also a to-do that I need to do here because I need to, this is going to be dynamic. This needs to be dynamic, which means that we can have one or, one or more car, go, car goals. So I'm just going to do that. And I also want to improve the reward system because I want to, I want to also reward the agent based on how far it is, how far the agent is from the final destination. I think that's going to teach the agent that, you know, even though the agent wasn't successful, it's going to be still getting points but penalize if it's too far from the, from the destination. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you. And again, this is available right here. You guys can download it as soon as this video gets released. 
Thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned or show you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out my patreon.com website where I basically post early access source code and also find me in Twitter where I'm basically talking about what I'm doing on a daily basis, different projects that I'm working on. And then I'm also in other social media such as Instagram and also Facebook. So if you guys have any questions, you can contact me in any of those social medias. You can also contact me here on YouTube if you have questions in the comments. Thank you very much, guys.